What's up everybody? In this video I'd like to talk about three of the most commonly used temperature scales which are the Fahrenheit scale, the Celsius scale, and the Kelvin scale. And on the left side of your screen here are the three guys who came up with these temperature scales. Uh, this guy on the top left here, this is Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit and he was a physicist, engineer, and glassblower. Uh, this guy on the top right here, this is, uh, this is Anders Celsius. He was a a, an astronomer. And then uh, this guy on the bottom here, this is William Thompson, first baron Kelvin, uh, also known as Lord Kelvin, who was a, a mathematical physicist and he was also uh, an engineer as well. So before getting into these three scales, I'd like to first just reinforce the idea here and make sure that we all are on the same page about what temperature really is. So remember, when we talk about temperature, we're talking about a measure of the average kinetic energy of the atoms or molecules that compose the sample. So kinetic energy, remember, that's the energy associated with motion. So for instance, if I had two blocks of aluminum, one hot and one cold, the, uh, the aluminum atoms in the hot block of aluminum are going to be moving around much faster on average uh, than the aluminum atoms in the cold block of aluminum. Now, I think a lot of people sort of confuse the terms temperature and heat with one another and maybe perhaps use them interchangeably, uh, but, the, but the reality is that they're not necessarily the same thing. Heat is actually the transfer of thermal energy, and it is the direction of heat which is determined by temperature. So in other words, if I have a, um, an ice cube and I throw it into a glass of water, uh, the water, which is the higher temperature of the two, is going to transfer energy in the form of heat to the ice cube, which is going to lower the temperature of the water and raise the temperature of the ice. Uh, on the other hand, if I was to place the ice on something colder than ice, like dry ice, uh, if, if that were the case, then the ice, which is now the hotter object, the higher temperature object, is going to transfer energy in the form of heat to the dry ice, which would raise the temperature of the dry ice and lower the temperature of the ice. So there's temperature and heat, and now I'd like to talk about the temperature scales themselves. So let's start with the Fahrenheit scale. Now the Fahrenheit scale is used in the United States, which is my home country, and it's also used in the Cayman Islands and in Belize. And in the Fahrenheit scale, water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees. Uh, then there's the Celsius scale, also known as the centigrade scale, and that's used pretty much everywhere else in the world. Uh, in the Celsius scale, water freezes at zero degrees and boils at 100 degrees. Now, when I say that water freezes at X degrees and boils at Y degrees, um, keep in mind, right here, I, I'm, I'm assuming that the pressure is atmospheric pressure. Um, if you think about it, uh, since pressure and temperature are uh, dependent on one another, uh, there are there is an infinite number of uh, possible freezing points and boiling points of water or any substance for that matter, depending on what the pressure is. Um, but since the uh, since atmospheric pressure is the most common and perhaps most scientifically applicable pressure, uh, that's the one that we assume when we um, when we have these temperature scales. So just keep that in mind. So the final scale that I'd like to talk about is the Kelvin scale. And as I mentioned in my last video when I talked about the units of measurement, uh, the Kelvin is actually the SI unit for temperature. And the reason why the Kelvin is the SI unit is because uh, the Kelvin scale is an absolute scale. Uh, by that I mean that zero Kelvin is the lowest possible temperature, also known as absolute zero. So Kelvin was a pretty brilliant guy because he recognized that there does indeed exist a lowest possible temperature. Uh, you can't just go infinitely colder and colder and colder. Um, and that lowest possible temperature, absolute zero, based upon our current scientific understanding, happens to be zero Kelvin. So on this diagram here, we have all three temperature scales, Fahrenheit on the left, Celsius in the middle, and Kelvin on the right. And we have three uh, important reference points here that are highlighted. One of them is absolute zero. Uh, another one is the freezing point of water at atmospheric pressure. And then the other one is the boiling point of water at atmospheric pressure. So um, <clears throat> I'd like to bring your attention to the Fahrenheit scale for a minute here. Uh, notice that the interval between the freezing and boiling points of water on the Fahrenheit scale happens to be 180 degrees. Uh, notice also now the similarity between the Celsius and Kelvin scales. In both cases, the interval between freezing points and boiling points of water is 100 degrees. So based upon this, we can conclude that the quantity of 1 degree Celsius 
is exactly identical is exactly identical to the quantity of one Kelvin. The only difference between the two scales is that they're shifted by a certain number. And uh, so, as you can imagine, uh, converting between Celsius and Kelvin is fairly simple, and, and indeed it is. So now let's go. Uh, let's talk about conversions. So let's start with the harder one of the two, which is converting between degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. So let's suppose that I have a certain temperature, and that is in degrees Fahrenheit, and I'd like to convert that temperature into degrees Celsius. Now, how would I go about doing that? So let's set up the equation here. We have degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius is equal to, now this conversion is sort of difficult for two reasons. Um, one of those reasons has to do with what's called the offset of the scale. In other words, where the, uh, where the Celsius scale is zero degrees, at that exact point, the Fahrenheit scale is 32 degrees. So the scales are actually offset by 32 degrees. So when we convert, we have to take care of that conversion in our offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit that we have already, and I'm going to subtract 32 from it. I'm going to subtract 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So that took care of the offset, but we've also got another problem here, and that has to do with the relative sizes of the degrees. As I mentioned previously, the interval between freezing and boiling of water for Fahrenheit is 180, but for Celsius it's 100, so there's a large discrepancy there. Celsius degrees are much larger than Fahrenheit degrees, so in our conversion we have to take care of that aspect of it as well. So going back to our conversion here, like I said, we've already taken care of the offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this term. I'm going to multiply this term by a ratio of the two degrees. Now in my ratio, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put degrees Fahrenheit on the bottom, right? Because we're, that's the unit that we're trying to get rid of. So when I divide degrees Fahrenheit by degrees Fahrenheit, that's going to cancel out. And then I'm going to put degrees Celsius on top. And then we just have to take a ratio of the two. So the ratio that I'm going to use is 180 degrees for Fahrenheit, the difference between freezing and boiling points of water, and then 100 degrees, which is that same distance in degrees Celsius. And it turns out that 100 over 180, this fraction actually reduces down to 5 ninths. So 5 degrees Celsius for every 9 degrees Fahrenheit. So here you have the formula here for the conversion of um, from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. Now, uh, what if you wanted to go back the other way? What if you wanted to go uh, from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit? Well, now all, we have the equation now, so all we have to do is just manipulate the equation and uh, just solve for um, degrees Fahrenheit now. So the way that we do that is, I'm not going to show all the steps here, but in essence what we would do is we would multiply by the inverse of 5 ninths, which is 9 fifths. We would multiply that by both sides of the equation. And then once we did that, we would add 32 degrees Fahrenheit to both sides of the equation. And the final result would be that the degrees Fahrenheit is equal to the degrees Celsius times 9 fifths, 9 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, 9 degrees Fahrenheit over 5 degrees Celsius, so it's the degrees Celsius times 9 fifths plus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, this is these two equations are basically the same thing. We've just all we've done was just manipulate this equation up here to get this equation down here. So that's how you convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius. And now I'm going to talk about how to convert between Celsius and Kelvin. So um, the, the, uh, the conversion between degrees Celsius and Kelvin is much, much simpler. To go from Celsius to, so, so suppose we had degrees Celsius and we wanted to convert that into Kelvins. To go from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, the, equa the equation for this conversion is that the temperature in Kelvins is equal to the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273.15. That's it. If you want to go from degrees Celsius to Kelvins, all you have to do is add 273.15. And if you wanted to go back the other way uh, from, um, from Kelvins to degrees Celsius, all you would have to do is subtract 273.15.
273.15. And uh, some people get these mixed up, you know, it's like it could be like, you know, I'm not really sure whether I should uh, add 273.15 or subtract it. And the thing that I, th that I usually use that helps me remember is the fact that because the Kelvin scale is an absolute scale, it can never be negative. So if you end up with a negative uh, temperature in Kelvins, you know that you did the wrong operation. You subtracted when you should have added. So there's how to convert between uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius and also how to convert between uh, Celsius and Kelvin. So let's, um, let's do a couple of, uh, of problems, shall we? So in this problem, uh, this problem says we have 12.9 degrees Fahrenheit and it wants to know what that temperature is in degrees Celsius and in Kelvins. So remember, um, we use our, our formula here for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius and that is that the degrees Celsius is equal to the degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit uh, times, the, uh, times that uh, ratio 5 ninths, 5 degrees Celsius over 9 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, it's 100 over 180. So uh, we simply, all we have to do is just uh, substitute our 12.9 in where it says degrees Fahrenheit. So that's going to be 12.9 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit times 5 degrees Celsius over 9 degrees Fahrenheit. And that number turns out to be, what is it? That number turns out to be negative 10.6 degrees Celsius. So the second part of the problem asks us, uh, what is this temperature in Kelvins? So remember to get from uh, degrees Celsius to Kelvins, all we have to do is add uh, 273.15. So the degrees uh, in Kelvin, the temperature in Kelvins is going to be uh, 273.15 plus negative 10.6 or simply 273.5 minus 10.6 and that temperature in kelvins is actually 262.5 kelvins so there's that problem and i'd like to do one more problem before we finish up here and uh, this problem says convert negative 40 degrees Celsius into degrees Fahrenheit. So remember, uh, our formula from going for going from Celsius to Fahrenheit is just sort of the opposite of you know when we went from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And remember that the uh, degrees Fahrenheit is equal to the temperature in degrees Celsius times nine fifths nine degrees Fahrenheit over five degrees Celsius plus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So all we have to do, I'm not going to write in the whole step again, but all we have to do is just plug in negative 40, wherever this degree Celsius is, negative 40 degrees Celsius. And if you um, put this into a calculator and do it yourself, which I highly encourage, I don't want you to just mindlessly watch me as I do this. I'd like you to work this out for yourself. But if you do this, then you'll actually get that the uh, temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is equal to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is sort of the interesting thing about the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales. They actually share a common point. Negative 40 degrees Celsius is also negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So there you go. There are the three uh, most commonly used temperature scales. And I hope this video helped you out a little bit. And um, stay tuned.